إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سلوات الله وسلامه عليه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد As always, ikhwati wa akhawati, Allah Ta'ala yubarak fikum. We begin by praising Allah Jalla Jalaluhu with praises and exaltations that only He is worthy of. We begin by sending His salawat and His salamat, His blessings and His peace upon the last and final messenger, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam wa ba'd. Then, alhamdulillah ta'ala, after some time, uh, we've had the opportunity to come here to Masjid Sunnah Nabawiyyah in Germantown, Philadelphia. And as always, Alhamdulillah Ta'ala, it's always a pleasure to see our communities growing and thriving in the West. The topic, Ikhwati wa Khawati, Allah Yubarak Fikum, the maintaining of our families, the maintaining of a Muslim family upon Salafiyyah upon Qur'an and Sunnah and Tawheed and Iman in the West. And the topic is one that encompasses many different, many different uh, topics. So the reality is, alhamdulillah, what we find from lessons in Salafi Marakiz and in Salafi Masajid, from lessons on Tawheed and Aqeedah and Manhaj and Fiqh and Lugha what we find in these lessons is that very means of maintaining our families upon Al-Islam. When Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Dhariyat, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ that indeed we did not create jinn kind nor mankind except to worship me. Illa liya'budun. Ma uridu minhum min rizqin wa ma uridu an yut'imun. We do not want from them provisions. We do not want them from them food. Allah, He is the provider. Allah, He is the all powerful. From the mufassirun are those that say when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Illa liya'budun. What this encompasses rather from the absolute uh, foundation. The absolute foundation for which we were created was to gain knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Because whomsoever has knowledge of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu is acquainted with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by, by way of his names and his attributes and by way of his actions and by way of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed upon the prophets and the messengers, then this is the one that will be, this is the one that will turn to the worship of Allah ta'ala more. So the reality is everything that we speak of in our masajid, in our maraqis, throughout the United States, throughout the West, throughout the dunya, is meant to fortify the Muslim family, the Salafi family, upon Tawheed, upon Aqeedah, upon Iman, upon Islam. This is what it is meant for. And I want to speak from a different angle today. And this is something that some articles and some affairs that I've been working on because of issues that have been coming up. So it was beneficial and related to the topic. And that is the topic of zawaj, marriage. And from a specific angle, from the angle of choosing our spouses and how it is that we choose our spouses. Because the reality, my brothers, my sisters in Islam, is that the, the foundation of the Muslim family is the husband and the wife. It is the mother and the father. And if you fortify that relationship, and if you strengthen that relationship, then you strengthen the guard and you strengthen the security and the safety that exists for the youth in that house, for the children in that house. But if that relationship itself is on the rocks, if that relationship itself is not sturdy, if that relationship itself is weak and just holding on, then you find that the children will be open to harm. Long term, the children will be open to harm. And this relationship of husband and wife is from the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says in Surah Ar-Rum, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا From the signs of Allah ta'ala, meaning from the signs of the, of the wujud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا That He created for you from your own selves, your spouses. And the Mufassirun, they mention there is two meanings that are encompassed in this verse. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his signs is that the spouses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created from us, for us, they are from us, meaning they are from our jinns. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us and our spouses from the jinnat, for example. But rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our spouses from our own selves. And this is closer. It is closer that when we are both from the same jinns, that we can understand each other. We can see how we each other operate and that we have been created for each other. And then the second meaning is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, he created his wife and our mother from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam himself. And that this is from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But why? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create? Why did Allah jalla jalaluhu create our spouses in this manner? So he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala li taskunu ilayha. Why? So that you may find comfort and tranquility with her. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created amongst you mawaddah, which is love, and rahmah, which is mercy. So our relationships, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this is a, a point I mentioned yesterday, right? That we have become deceived to think that the basis of a relationship is love and love only. That's it. Right? That 
Yani we're going to look into each other's eyes and die in the love of each other's eyes. And that's it. The, the entire life is going to be spent in this fashion that we are going to be dying in love with you. The husband to the wife and the wife to the husband. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً Allah Ta'ala placed between you love. There's no doubt that there's love between the husband and the wife. Rahma, But there's also mercy. That is also from at the core of what exists in a marriage. Rahma. إِنَّ فِي ذَٰلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Indeed, in that there are signs for a people that ponder. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِن نَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا وَجَعَلَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا لِيَسْكُنَ إِلَيْهَا It is He who created for you from a single soul. هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِن نَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا It is He who created you from a single soul. وَجَعَلَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا And He created from that soul its mate. لِيَسْكُنَ إِلَيْهَا Again, why? So that He may find tranquility and comfort in that relationship. So that he may find tranquility and comfort in that relationship. And many of us, many, you find that they spend a good portion of their lives looking for that comfort and that tranquility. It's not lost upon anyone that divorce in our communities, rather amongst the Muslims, has increased at an alarming rate at an alarming rate. And there is deficiency, my brothers, my sisters in Islam, as to what we are looking for in our spouses. There's a deficiency in that. And when the foundation of an action in itself, the foundation of a marriage in itself, is not on sturdy ground, you're going to find that for the rest of your life you're going to be you're not going to have any thabat. You're not going to find yourself sturdy in that relationship. So what are some of the advices? We know that our Prophet والسلام, in a number of ahadith, he, he encouraged marriage. As soon as you have enough that you can pay the mahar, you should get married. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Muttafiqun alayhi. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata fal yatazawwaj. Whomsoever from amongst you has enough. Yani, you can pay the mahal, you can pay what you need to pay to get married. Fal yatazawwaj. Then let them get married. Fa innahu aghabbu lil-basar. It is an aid for you in lowering your sight. That is an aid for you in that. Wa ahsanu lil-farj. And it is better for you in protecting your modesty, in protecting yourself from immoral actions. And whomsoever is not capable, then let them fast. It is indeed a shield for him. The very famous hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when some of the Sahaba, they came to the homes of the Prophet ﷺ, seeking to understand the worship of the Prophet ﷺ within the home. And when they saw this, they belittled their own actions. So one of them said, for example, that I'm going to fast, I'm not going to break my fast. Another one said that I'm not going to marry women. Another one said I'm going to pray the entire night, I'm not going to go to sleep. Another one said I'm not going to eat meat. And when the Prophet ﷺ, he heard this, he admonished them. And at the end of that admonishment, Indeed, I marry women, the one who turns away from my sunnah, then they are not indeed from me. But what are the criterion, what, ad, what uh, uh, admonishments and advices are present in the Quran and in the sunnah for the one who is looking to get married, who is looking at the spouse. Now, a person says, Khalas, I'm married, I have one, I have two, I have three, I have four wives. Whatever amount of wives a person has, or a sister says, Khalas, I'm married, this is really not a topic for me, and this is not the case. This is not the case, but rather these are 
characteristics that we throughout our life need to be working on. At the asal or at the foundation, at the foundation of, of marriage, we can find the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, as to what to look for in a woman. The Messenger of Allah والسلام, he said in a hadith collected by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu Tunkahul mar'atu li arba'a li arba'in The woman is married for four affairs li maliha wa li hasabiha wa jamaliha wa li diniha fadfar bi dhat al-deen talibat yada the Messenger of Allah والسلام, he said, Tunkahul Mar'atu li Arba'in. The woman is married for four affairs, li maliha. Either because she is financially well off. This is a reason. This is a reason for which a woman can be married, because she is financially well off. Because it, especially if someone is not financially strong, you may find that this will lessen the amount of need that the wife has for the husband. So this is a reason that a person may marry a woman that is well off financially. Well, Jamali, she's married for her beauty, and this says without, without uh, uh, this needs no further explanation. Tunkahul mar'atu li arba'in li maliha wa li hasabiha. And for her lineage. She can also be married for her lineage, the family that she comes from. And this is something which may be a distant a uh, concept for us here in the West, especially in the United States. But the Qaba'il looking at the tribes and the families a person comes from, the man comes from or the woman comes from, is something which has meant even amongst the scholars of Islam, even amongst the scholars of Islam and the Imams who have spoken of this affair that when we are looking for suitability amongst two people, that you do look at the nasab, you do look at where someone is coming from which family and which tribe they are coming from. And we will get to that point. وَجَمَالِهَا وَلِدِينِهَا And she is also married, of course, for her religion. فَضْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ طَلِبَتْ يَدَاكَ So you should be inclined towards the one that has deen, the one that has religion with her. You should look at her deen and her religion. طَلِبَتْ يَدَاكَ Because if you don't, then the ruin will be upon you, it will be upon your hand. So what are some of the advices that we find in this very simple and small hadith? In it there is istihbab at-tazawwuj li dhat al-nasab wal mal wal jamali illa an takuna ghayr mutadayyina. The very first affair which is mentioned is that it is istihbab yani it is an affair which is liked that you should take a look at a woman's what? at a woman's financial condition, at a woman's lineage, her family, what is her family like, at her beauty, as long as she is not غير متدينة, yani she is not one who is unreligious. If she is unreligious, then her beauty does not matter, her family does not matter, right? And her wealth does not matter because the asal is that you look at her deen. You look at her religion. This is the first affair that you look at. And here we want to mention some of the statements. For example, if we speak of a nasab, looking at whom you are marrying, and what is mentioned regarding awsaf al kafa'ah. Awsaf al kafa'ah, yani suitability. Are the two people that are looking to get married, are they suitable to each other? Is the man suitable to the woman? And is the woman suitable to the man? This is an affair where the scholars have differed. And what is meant by this is that, are they on equal grounding? Is that man and the woman upon equal grounding? It comes... For example, one of the narrations on Imam Malik, yani one of the opinions that is mentioned on Imam Malik ibn Anas rahimahullahu ta'ala, he said that when we are looking at suitability between two spouses, 
two that may get married, one of the opinions that is mentioned on Imam Malik ibn Anas is that you look at a deen, the religion, al hurriyah are they both free or is one of them a slave? al hurriyah was salamatu min al uyub And you also take a look at as salama min al uyub Are there any, uh, is there an aib? Something physical, something mental, right? Something disease related in one of them that would make them unsuitable to the other. That would make them unsuitable to the other. And especially in this day and time, this is something which is very important to look at, especially this last one. As-salamatu min al uyub That that person should be someone who does not have a, does not have a physical ailment, does not have a medical ailment, a, me a mental ailment, right? That the other spouse is now at a disadvantage. Is this what we look at when we are looking at marriage? Are we looking at these affairs? This is one of the narrations that comes on Imam Malik. Al Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he says, he and nasabu wa deen. That if you want to see if two are suitable to each other, you take a look at an nasab, the family, what deen? There's other statements from Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. For example, that he says, the one who is suitable to marry a Qurayshi is a Qurayshiyah. And if someone is from the tribe of Quraysh, then they should marry someone from the tribe of Quraysh. If someone is from Banu Hashim, then they should marry someone that is from Banu Hashim. This is a statement mentioned, and this is mentioned by Al Imam Ibn Qayyim, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi, in Zad al Ma'ad. As an opinion that is mentioned from Al Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi, Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal. Al Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi, he mentions five affairs. If we're looking at suitability between two people for marriage, you look at five affairs. A deen, the religion, an nasab, the lineage, the family, al hurriyah, are they free or are they enslaved? Was sanaa, you also look at occupation. You also look at occupation. I'm forgetting the name of the Sahabi. There was one from amongst the Sahaba that used to do hijama. He did hijama upon the Prophet wasalam. I believe his kunya was Abu Hind or Ibn Hind. I believe it was Abu Hind. And the Prophet والسلام, advised the people to either marry him or marry their sons to his daughters. Yani marry their daughters to him or marry their sons to his daughters. So occupation is something which is looked at. In this narration, in this opinion, that is narrated on Al-Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi wal-mal. And you also look at their financial stability. The, some of the Shafi'iyya, some of the Shafi'iyya, they have said here, فِي الدِّينِ وَالنَّسَبِ وَالْهُرِّيَّةِ وَالسَّنَاعَةِ وَالسَّلَامَ مِنَ الْعُيُوبِ الْمُنَفِّرَةِ That you should take a look at the religion, the lineage, الْهُرِّيَّةِ Are they free? And this is something that we don't deal with nowadays. وَالسَّنَاعَةِ Occupation وَالسَّلَامَةُ مِنَ الْعُيُوبِ الْمُنَفِّرَةِ and also that are they, are they, are they free of al-uyub al munafira Meaning what? Are they free of those inflictions that will cause someone that if they found out about it, they would say no. Are they mentally stable? Are they physically, is there any issues with them physically? Are there any medical issues that you need to know about? And many of these affairs you find that people, that when they enter into marriage, that these affairs are not spoken of. That these affairs are not spoken of. And of course, you have mentioned by uh, Ibn Hazr al-Asqalani rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi as far as, for example, the opinion of looking at that two that have different lineages 
that the, the Qurayshi, the one who is from Quraysh should not marry except from Quraysh, that you find that Ibn Hazar al-Asqalani rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he mentioned in Fatah that a number of, of, uh, uh, of Sahaba, they have said that suitability is mukhtassun bid-deen. Mukhtassun bid-deen, it is specific to religion. That's what you look at, you look at a person's deen. From amongst them, there's a narration on Imam Malik. There is one narration on Imam Malik that says that you look at the religion. It's also mentioned on Abdullah ibn Umar. It's mentioned on Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And from the Tabi'een, it's mentioned on Muhammad ibn Salim. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. And such an opinion is also mentioned on Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah ta'ala. And this is very important, right? This is important because if we look at the sunnah of the Prophet wasalam, rather if we look at the ayat of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum inna Allaha alimun khabir Allah Ta'ala says, O oh mankind, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. We created you from a man and a woman. Wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu and we made you into tribes and families وَلِتَعَارَفُوا so that you may come to know each other إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ the best of you with Allah is the one that has the most taqwa إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alim he knows all and he's khabir and he is well acquainted with all affairs Surah Ali Imran Allah ta'ala he says فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ أَنَّا لَا أُضِيعُ عَمَلَ عَامِلٍ مِّنْكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ Allah ta'ala he answered their dua that Allah jalla jalaluhu will not waste away the action of anyone from amongst you who did that action, be they man or be they woman. Ba'abukum li ba'din. You are from each other. Innama al mu'minuna ikhwa. Indeed, the believers, they are brothers one to the other. So Bilal al Habashi radiallahu ta'ala anhu married a Qurashiyya. And Fatima bint Qais. Fatima bint Qais radiallahu ta'ala anha was married to the was married to the adopted son of the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam. And these qasas and these affairs are mentioned and they are well known. And they are well known in the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, as it is collected by Imam Ahmad in his musnad, لا فضل لعربيا على عجميا ولا لعجميا على عربيا. There is no nobility of the Arab over the non-Arab. Nor is there a nobility of the non-Arab over the Arab. وَلَا لِأَبْيَضَ عَلَىٰ أَسْوَدِ The white man has no nobility over the black one. وَلَا لِأَسْوَدَ عَلَىٰ أَبْيَضِ Nor does the black man have any nobility over the white man. So here Al-Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he says فَالَّذِي يَقْتَضِي حُكْمَهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ اِعْتِبَارُ الدِّينِ فِي الْكَفَاءَةِ أَصْلًا وَكَمَالًا he said, so the suitability that we seek out in a person, the asal of it is the deen. That is the, and kamal, and, and the perfection of that is where? In the deen. That is also in the deen. Here you find some of the ulama, for example, they mention that this is the asal. The asal, the very first affair that you begin with is what? The very first affair that you begin with is the deen. What is the religion of the potential spouse? Yani, how is the religion of the potential spouse? This is the first thing that you look at. And everything follows that. Everything then, it follows that. That is the nullifier. That nullifies everything. Meaning if that is not there, then it nullifies everything. She has money, but she has no deen. She comes from a good family, but she has no deen. Right? She's beautiful, but she has no deen. And the same, it goes vice versa. Of course, I'm sitting in front of the brothers. Alhamdulillah ta'ala, this is why I speak in that context, but it goes vice versa. Shaykh al-Uthaymeen, rahmatullahi ta'ala, he said, Sahibatul deen khayru min kulli haulai thalath 
اللاتی معها لأن صاحبة الدين لا تضيع حقك أبدا The one who has religion The one who is Fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala She outweighs the rest of them Because she is the one that is not going to what? She is not going to waste away your right she is not the one who's going to spread your secrets. And she is the one who's going to safeguard your wealth and your children as it is right for her to safeguard them. And this is the opposite of the one who's is deen. And now after Nasa we go to wealth. And indeed wealth and Nasab, even the family that a person comes from, the respect that a person gets by way of those affairs is respect in the dunya. It's mentioned by the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu was salam. Adunya kulluha mata' wa khayru mata'i dunya al-mar'atu saliha. That the dunya, all of it is riches. But the best, ri uh, 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 from the best riches of this dunya is a righteous woman. It's mentioned on Sahl ibn Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Qal marra rajulun ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqal ma taquluna fi hadha? A man, he passed by, and you know, the sahaba, some of the sahaba, they were sitting with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a man passed by, so the messenger of Allah said, what do you say regarding this one? And he was not a believer. He was not Muslim. Qalu hariyun ma'ana hariyun إن خطب أن ينكح وإن شفع أن يشفع وإن قال أن يستمع. He said this one is likely that if he was to, يعني إذا خطب, if he was to ask for someone's hand in marriage, أن ينكح, he would be married to. He would be married to. وإذا شفع أن يشفع, if he interceded for someone, the intercession would be accepted. وَإِنْ قَالَ أَنْ يُسْتَمَعَ And if he spoke, then he would be listened to. ثُمَّ سَكَتْ The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went quiet. فَمَرَّ رَجُلٌ مِنْ فُقَرَاءِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ So a man, he passed by who was from the poor, from amongst, uh, from amongst the believers. فَقَالَ مَا تَقُولُونَ فِي هَذَا Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, what do you say about this one? قَالُوا حَرِيٌّ إِنْ خَطَبَ أَنْ لَا يُنْكَحَ وَإِنْ شَفَعَ أَنْ لَا يُشَفَعَ وَإِنْ قَالَ أَنْ لَا يُسْتَمَعَ If this one was to ask to marry someone, he would not be married to. If he was to intercede, his intercession would not be accepted. And if he was to speak, no one would listen to him. No one would listen to him. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ هَذَا خَيْرٌ مِنْ مِلْءِ الْأَرْضِ مِثْلْ هَذَا This man, and the second one, is better even if in front of him you put so many of that first man that they filled up the earth, this poor man from amongst the Muslims would be better than all of them put together. Hence, why? Because a person's wealth and their sharaf in their lineage, that only benefits them in the dunya. But as for a person's iman and a person's Islam, then that benefits them in the dunya and it benefits them in the akhirah. So from here we say that the asal of what we look for a woman or in a potential spouse is their deen, is their religion over all else. And if anything is added to it, then it is added afterwards. But if she or he is deficient in their religion, if he or she is deficient in their religion, they're not known at the masjid, they don't sit in the lessons, they're not known to come to the, 
to the classes. If all of this stuff is known, the car that they're driving, the house that they're living in, and the nobility or the, or the respect that they get from whomsoever they get it from is not going to avail you in anything. It won't benefit you in anything. Then after that, it's important to understand that when we are looking at deen, what are we looking for? Because one of the affairs that we forget when we look at religion is we forget to look at character. وَالْخُلُقُ مِنَ الدِّينِ And character is from the religion. It's narrated on Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم He said إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْبَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَأَنْكِحُوهُ إِنْ لَا تَفْعَلُوا تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيضٌ The Messenger of Allah عليه الصلاة والسلام he said, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْبَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ If there comes to you a man and you are pleased with their religion and their akhlaq, their character. فَأَنْكِحُوهُ Then marry, marry off your daughter to them. They're religious and they have good character. Marry off your daughter. إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوا If you do not do that, تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيضٌ If you do not do this, then there will be fitna upon the earth. There will be corruption upon the earth. And there's no doubt that if those whose, whose uh, proposals should be accepted because they have deen with them and they have akhlaq with them and they have good manners with them, if those proposals are rejected because of one of those other affairs, they're not rich, they're not coming from a particular tribe or a particular family, that this is no doubt the cause of what? Fasad, corruption upon the earth. And fornication and zina would become rampant if those that need to get married are not able to get married. Hadith collected by Imam Tirmidhi and uh, a graded Hassan by a Sheikh Al Albani. Al Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says, Jama an Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam abayna taqwa Allahi wa husni al khuluq. Lianna taqwa Allahi tuslihu ma bayna al abdi wa bayna rabbihi. Al Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah, he says, Here the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he joins together between taqwa and husn al khuluq and good character. Why? Because with taqwa تُصْلِحُ مَا بَيْنَ الْعَبْدِ وَبَيْنَ رَبِّهِ A person corrects what is between them and their Lord, their Creator. وَحُسْنُ الْخُلِقِ خُلُقِ يُصْلِحُ مَا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ خَلْقِ And حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ, good character, it corrects what is between you and the creation of Allah Ta'ala. فَتَقْوَ اللَّهِ تُوْجِبُ لَهُ تُوْجِبُ لَهُ مُحَبَّةَ اللَّهِ The taqwa of Allah mandates, it brings about what? The love of Allah. If you have taqwa, Allah Ta'ala will love you. If you have taqwa, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah Ta'ala loves the people of taqwa. So a person who has, who is a muttaqi, who has taqwa, Allah Ta'ala yuhibbuhu. Allah Ta'ala will love him. فَتَقْوَ اللَّهِ تُوْجِبُ لَهُمْ مُحَبَّةَ اللَّهِ وَحُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ يَدْعُوا إِلَى مُحَبَّتِهِ And حُسْنُ الْخُلُق Good character, it calls the people to love you. So where the taqwa of Allah Ta'ala will cause Allah to love you, حُسْنُ الْخُلُق Good character will call the, will, would cause the people to love you. And it is a part of our deen. It is a part of our deen. تُنْكِهُ الْمَرْعَ ذَاتَ الْخُلُقِ فَإِنَّ الْخُلُقَ مِنَ الدِّينِ From the affairs that we should look at in our spouses, husbands and wives, is what is their character like? What do you know of their character? 
because character is from the religion. It's narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It's narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Akmalu al mu'minina imanan. Akmalu al mu'minina imanan wa ahsanuhum khuluqan. The most complete of the believers in their iman are the best of them in their character. They are the best of them in, the char in their character. Narrated by Imam Abu Dawood and Imam al Tirmidhi. In the narration of Imam Al-Tirmidhi, it's mentioned, وَخِيَارُكُمْ خِيَارُكُمْ لِنِسَائِهِمْ خُلُوقًا The best of you are those that are best to their women in their character. They are best to their women in their character. So, if this is the case, then what is character? What is it that we should be looking for in a spouse? as it concerns character. Shaykh Abu Abd al-Rahman Al-Azim Abadi Rahimahullah Ta'ala Sahib Aun al-Ma'bud He says Qala Ibn Raslan Huwa ibaratun an awsaf al-insan allati yu'amilu biha ghayrahu What should you look at? What is character? Character are those attributes that you use to deal with other people. When you deal with other people, how do you deal with other people? How do you speak to other people? How do you come in contact with other people? Do you smile at others? Do you speak to them calmly? Are you always angry? How do you deal with other people? And character, yani attributes of a person's character, are divided into two categories. They're mahmuda and madhmuma. Mahmuda is what? Praiseworthy. And madhmuma is what? Those that are despised, those that are not good. فالمحمودة منها صفات الأنبياء والأولياء والصالحين كصبر عند المكارح والحمل عند الجفاء وحمل الأذى والإحسان للناس والتودد إليهم والرحمة بهم والشفقة عليهم واللين في القول ومجانبة المفاسد والشرور وغير ذلك So what are good characteristics that we should look for in a spouse? The characteristics that we find are mentioned regarding the prophets, regarding the awliya of Allah, regarding the righteous, such as patience, when something which is disliked occurs, right? You don't like something, something happens to you from fitan, from trials, tribulations. Is this a person that, that shows patience? Is this a person that shows patience? Is this... Someone that if someone is coarse and harsh with them, they can control themselves. Is this person, does this person have this characteristic? That if something harmful, and if someone harms them, they can withstand that harm. They do good towards the people. They can show affection. They can show mercy. They care about others. They are soft in their speech. Alim fil qawli. They are from those that set aside, yani, they save themselves from mafasid, from anything that is, yani, uh, 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 from the causes of corruption and harm. Al Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, حقيقة حسن الخلق بذل بذل المعروف وكف الأذى وطلاقه وطلاقة الوجه. What is the أصل of the حسن الخلق? What is the absolute? I mean, the origin. If it, it is number one, bringing about benefit for others. Number two, stopping the harm, stopping harm from inflicting someone else. 
And number three, that your facial expressions and how you deal with other people causes them what? Comfort. They're comforted when they deal with someone else. You smile. You speak to people with a calm voice. You're not yelling. These are characteristics that we should look for in our spouses. Now a person, they say, well, how am I supposed to ascertain if someone I'm looking to marry has the, these are pretty intimate yani, uh, uh, descriptions. How, uh, how am I to ascertain if these are characteristics that a potential spouse has? And the reality is that for the woman, it is especially important that the one who is in charge of her affair, her wali, is someone who is known in the community to be someone who's responsible. Too many times, I've gotten yani, phone calls from individuals. I'm the wali to seven sisters. Who are you? Who made you the wali to seven sisters? And what do you know about being a wali? Which masjid do you go to? You're not seen in the lessons. How have you become the wali to seven sisters? So it's important that number one, our sisters, they choose. If you are here, what the, what the scholars they mention is that in, in the Gharb, in the West, if someone accepts Islam and they do not have from their family those that are Muslim, that those that take the responsibility of their wilaya is the maraqis and the masajid. And those that are in charge of the maraqis and the masajid, those that are in charge of the affairs of the Muslims, so that's whom you should go to. And then it is the obligation upon them. It is the obligation upon them that they should look for these characteristics in that individual. Not only should they look for these characteristics in that individual, they should look for these characteristics where? In the individuals that are around that individual. And for our brothers, when you are looking at a spouse, it is allowable for you to look at who her family is. And what are the characteristics that you see in the family? Are they known for good character? Are they known in the community? And to be very thorough when we are doing this. I Billahi alaykum, it's, it's ajeeb. Yani the phone calls that I get. On, I married the sister. I didn't know that she was mentally ill. Well, whose fault is that? It's not my fault. You're the one who married her. So these are affairs that we need to be thorough with. We need to be thorough with. Because if we cannot establish the relationship of the husband and the wife, it is on that foundation that you establish the family. And if we can't establish the family, it is with the families that we establish the communities. And if we can't establish the communities, then how are we going to establish the entire ummah of the Muslims? Al-Imam Al-Manawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, in Faith Al-Qadir, he says, Al-Khuluq bil-Bishri, wa-tawaddudi, wa-shafaqati. What is good character? He says, good character is through your interactions with others, smiling, your facial expressions, as they say now, it is body language, and showing affection and care, a sabr alayhim, being someone who's able to be patient upon the, upon the, uh, uh, the deficiency of your spouse. Leaving off pridefulness. Istitalah. Istitalah is what? You need to give room. Right? Istitalah. 
Wal-ghadabi Wal-haqdi Wal-hasadi And leaving off Leaving off anger And jealousy Right? And hatred Leaving all of this off Wa aslu dhalika Gharizyun Gharizyun the asal of al-akhlaq, of good, of good khuluk is what? Gharizi. Meaning what? It's, it's natural. It's, it's something which is foundational. Right? It's something which is there. The asal is there. Wa kamaluhu muktasibun. But the perfection of it is what? Muktasib. Meaning what? You have to work towards it. So everyone has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except for those whose akhlaq may have been corrupted, right? Because of environment, because of how they, you know, how they live their lives, right? The asal of it is that it is, what? It is something which is there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us good, yani an aspect of good character. وَكَمَالُهُ muktasib. But if you want to perfect your akhlaq, you want to perfect your character, then what? It requires work. You need to work towards that. Al Imam al Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his book Al Adab al Mufrad, in the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, In Allah qasama baynakum akhlaqa, akhlaqa kum kama qasama baynakum arzaqa kum. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has divided amongst you your akhlaq. As he has divided amongst you your what? Your rizq. Meaning what? This is an important point. Meaning what? Is everyone the same when it comes to their provisions? No. Some Allah Ta'ala has given more. Others Allah Ta'ala has given what? Less. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said akhlaq is the same way Allah ta'ala has some people have more while others have less Shaykh Zayd ibn Hadi al-Madkhali rahimahullah ta'ala in his explanation and we'll end with this statement he says after he clarifies that this hadith is a proof that all of these affairs are in the hands of Allah all of these affairs are in the hands of Allah he says, وَمِن جُمْلَةِ ذَلِكَ بَيَانُهُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَسَمَ بَيْنَ الْخَلْقِ وَالْأَخْلَاقِ From those affairs that are in the hands of Allah Ta'ala, that Allah Ta'ala has divided amongst the people is character, good character. أَيْ حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ النَّاسُ لَيْسُ سَوَاء فِي الْأَخْلَاقِ The people are not the same when it comes to character. And this part is, this part is important when we are looking for marriage, when we are looking to go into marriage, right? You look at a person's akhlaq. And even if you are already in a marriage, akhlaq is something that we have to work on with each other. I'm bringing this point up specifically as it is a part of deen. You know, I mentioned this the other day that you have, yani, speaking from experience, right? You have couples that call and they've been married one year, two year, three years and they have children with each other and the first time or the second time a fight comes and they're on the phone the wife just spills all the beans husband did this and he did this and he did this and he did this and he did this and then the husband starts and the wife did this and she did this and he did this and subhanallah there's no shyness from either one of them there's no shyness there's no looking regardless of what feud you have had with each other. She is the mother of your child. Do you want the imam of your community or the imam or whomsoever you're speaking to, right? To say that this man is married to a woman that does this and this and this and she is the mother of your child. And the same thing with the women. That the man is the father. You are living in his house. He's paying your bills. And you're just going to spill everything. Everything. And it is in these times that you see that a person's akhlaq, a person's character is weak. 
is weak because they cannot even preserve they cannot even preserve what will bring benefit to them I mean, let alone what you are is one of those right you shoot yourself in the foot as long as it's hitting the other person too right this is the thought process yani how are you coming back in that how are you coming back this is a quote unquote counseling session right how are you going to come back in that marriage now you know you set up a counseling session at the dawa center and here the imam this one that one and then this is how you come this goes against your own best interests it goes against your own best interests there's no coming back from that now so akhlaq character is not something right as al imam al manawi he said what that you have from it that which is established and then you have which is what you need to perfect it with and some people need to perfect it more than others wadhalika fadlullah yu'tihi man yasha that's of course the it is the the, uh, 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 the father of allah ta'ala he gives to whomsoever he wants but he says he says rahim allah ta'ala an nasu laysu sawa fi al akhlaq they're not the same when it comes to their character minhum al mutamakkinu fi al ittisafi bil akhlaq al hasana you have from the people that is mutamakkin meaning what they have good character from every angle you look at them you can see good character in them every angle they're mutamakkin bil akhlaq al hasana wa minhum duna dhalik and then you have from the people that are not like that minhum al muflisu wal iyadu billah you have from amongst them those that are what muflis meaning what bankrupt they have no good character they don't have what was foundational from it so forget about having what's going to complete it they're muflis and what's ajeeb is that sometimes you hear the people saying what i want to marry a woman that's like that i want to marry a woman i come home she's loud and she's yelling at me and she's uh, i want to marry a man which is like waliyadu billahi ta'ala we have to leave these thoughts off these are thoughts from jahiliya ikhwan we left off kufr right we can leave these things off can we imagine that the sahaba radhwanullahi ta'ala alayhim ajma'in would be asking for wives or the sahabiyat would be asking for husbands that were like this these are not this is not a character which is marriage material it's not it's not from those affairs that we need to look at when we are looking at marriage whether it is brothers or sisters right especially nowadays because many of our communities you have people that have accepted islam and they enter into islam so they are marrying those that have children look at the tarbiyah of the children look at the tarbiyah of the children especially if those children were born into what islam and you may have someone they accepted islam right alhamdulillah they accepted islam and their children accepted islam but they were raised in jahiliyyah this is one thing but if you have someone who is muslim look at the children because you are working to establish a family you're not working to see that well let me see if this can work go into the marriage thinking of i i'm i'm marrying this individual because either i'm going to bury them or they're going to bury me that's why i'm going to marry you right and if we as a people are just looking at raw affection and raw love and what's that other word for love lust jazakallah uh, khair right if that is what you're looking for my brothers my sisters in islam right ask those i'm not that old i look old i'm not that old right ask those that are older that lasts about 2 weeks that's it and the meaning of that is not that you don't love your spouse that's not the meaning of it but as i mentioned does iman go up and down huh so you don't think your love of someone's going to go up and down you don't think there's going to be one day you really love your spouse and the next day you're looking at them and and you're just thinking the days are going to come it's going to happen right 
It's normal because we're human beings. We're human beings. The affection a husband and a, and a wife have for each other, it changes. It changes from when they were 18 or 19 or 20 or 21 with no kids and no responsibilities to now when they're 40 or 50 and they have four or five or six kids and now they have responsibilities. That love and affection has changed. Marry those that are understanding of that. Marry those that are understanding. You're going to marry someone because they're beautiful and you're just attracted. Yes, this is a part of it. No doubt this is a part of it. Nor do I advise someone to marry someone and you're not attracted to them. Right? This is a part of it. But guess what? They're only going to be attracted for a certain period of time. That, that peace is going to run out. Look at their deen. And look at, from their deen, look at their akhlaq. Because this is what is missing. You'll find, alhamdulillah ta'ala, You'll find that the brother or the sister, Alhamdulillah, they're praying in the masjid, Alhamdulillah, they're Salafi, Alhamdulillah, they may be at classes. But if they are muflis in their akhlaq, if, they're, if they are bankrupt in their akhlaq, they don't know how to deal with people, right? What makes you think they're going to know how to deal with you? He says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, He says, وَهَذَا لَا يَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْإِنسَانِ يَتَّكِلُ عَلَىٰ مَا قَسَمَ وَيَقُولُ أَرَّى بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لِي The meaning of this, what we say when Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said that Allah Ta'ala has divided, has split, right? And, and uh, 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 divided out akhlaq. There's another word for this. Forgive. Distribute. No, not distribute. Portion. Huh? Portion. Portion. Okay. For those that are at DC, they know I have, I have issues with the English language sometimes. Now, portion it out. Yani people have different amounts, just as people have different amounts of rizq. Just as people have different amounts of what? Of, of money and of, uh, of wealth. So he says the meaning of this is not that a person just says, Khalas, this is what Allah Ta'ala gave me. Yani, uh, uh, I can translate it, I can easily translate this as what? This is who I am. I've heard that one too. Right? You try to advise someone, Ahi, this is who I am. That's it. This is who I am. Well, uh, Alhamdulillah, now you're Muslim. Ten years ago you weren't Muslim. That's who you were. You changed, right? Work towards change. Work towards bettering yourself and improving yourself. So the Shaykh, he says, Right? He says, هذا لا يدل على أن الإنسان يتكل على ما يتكل أفضل Now, this is not an indication that a person should just become dependent on what Allah Ta'ala portioned for him. And he says, I'm pleased with what Allah Ta'ala gave me ثم يترك العمل And then he leaves off trying to better himself. بَلْ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَعْمَلَ وَيَتَحَلَّ بِمَكَارِمِ الْأَخْلَاقِ But rather upon him is to act and to beautify himself with beautiful akhlaq, with beautiful character. And I give this as an example, Ikhwan, that the person, for example, who is new to the religion, right? Or someone who maybe has been Muslim but has always uh, 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 found difficulty, for example, in Salatul Fajr. Right? When they begin that, that affair of Salatul Fajr, is it easy on the first night? Is it easy on the second night? Is it easy on the third night or the fourth or the fifth or the first month or the second month or the first year? Or this? No. But you still have to go through the emotions of it. You still have to force yourself out of bed. You have to force yourself to make that wudu. And then you have to force yourself to go to the masjid. And as you continue to do that, then what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with the love of that action. And Allah Ta'ala does not allow you to sleep at that time. And you become from those that you're waking up at 2 o'clock to check your uh, phone. And then you wake up at 2.30 to check your phone. And then at 3 and then 3.30, did I miss Fajr? Did I miss Fajr? Am I too late? Can I go to the masjid? This is from the what? This is from the ni'mah of Allah Ta'ala. Why? Because you put in the work. You did it when it was difficult. You dragged yourself out of bed when it was difficult. 
And the same comes to your akhlaq, to your character when you're dealing with each other, your husband or your wife. It should be easier at that time to deal with them. To work on that character. So he says, يَتَحَلَّى and يَتَحَلَّى يَعْنِي يَتَجَمَّلْ يَتَجَمَّلْ بِمَكَارِمِ الْأَخْلَاقِ Beautify yourself. If your spouse is yelling, don't yell. If your spouse is acting up, you don't need to act up. If your spouse does something, you don't need to do that. You need to be the one that is patient. You need to be, you need to be the one that withholds the harm and carries the harm. وَبِاللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ The reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reward is with Allah jalla jalaluhu. He says, وَيَأْتِي بِالْأَسْبَابِ الَّتِي يُكَمِّلْ بِهَا خُلُقَهُ مَعَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فِي آدَاءِ الْفَرَائِدْ وَالْوَاجِبَاتِ وَالْمُسْتَحَبَّاتِ He should do those affairs, should do those affairs that will allow him to complete his character and how he interacts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his obligations, from what? From the mustahabbat. وَمَعَ النَّاسِ فِي الْحُقُوقِ وَالْوَاجِبَاتِ وَالْمُعَامَلَاتِ فِي مَا بَيْنَهُ and he should work, he should work to improve his character or her character when it comes to their dealings with other people. And this is a work in progress. The meaning of this brothers and sisters is not that this is something you attain in one day. Khalas, you heard yani on, on this day, you heard the talk tomorrow, you're going to go and you're going to be perfect in your character, you're not going to slip and everything's going to... La, that's not the meaning of it. But that when you wake up in the morning, my brothers and sisters in Islam, regardless of where your marriage is, regardless of what your relationship with your spouse is, you say, today is the day that I improve myself. That I don't deal with her or I don't deal with him as I've been doing. And if harm comes to me, I carry that harm and I say, Alhamdulillah ta'ala, my ajar is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if I carry this and I don't yell back or I don't react with this, perhaps tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, then maybe the next day. And if not the next day, then maybe the day after that. And if not the day after that, maybe next week. Or if not next week, maybe next month. Or if not next month, maybe next year. But as I continue to do this, it will change how she interacts with me or it will change how he interacts with me. This, my brothers and my sisters in Islam, the reason I'm sharing this is because these are the affairs that, uh, and especially sometimes you get busy so you can't prepare, uh, uh, you can't just prepare something just for a specific speech. But these are the advices that are needed, knowing the phone calls and knowing some of these affairs that have been coming. When people are speaking of, yani, sometimes you have, you know, uh, 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 from a husband and wife, you, you know, we have issues. And you hear about the issue and you're like, that's not an issue, that's a Friday evening between a husband and a wife. That's what that is. Yani people, we treat certain affairs as though, as though this exists nowhere. It exists in almost, yani almost every marriage is going to have issues. It's going to have issues. So to strengthen that relationship, my brothers and sisters in Islam, at the beginning, when we're looking to get married, when we're looking at spouses, it's important to look at these affairs, to look at a person's deen, and from the deen to look at a person's character. And if we're already married, then this affair of character, yani the Messenger of Allah alayhi wa sallam, he was asked regarding those greatest affairs that will enter a person into Jannah. And the Prophet sallam, said, a taqwa wa husnul khuluq. If you want to enter into Jannah, you need two things. You need taqwa, you need the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need piety and piousness. Piousness, that's a word? No? Piety. Alhamdulillah. And <laughs> and you need husnul khuluq, you need good character, right? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, those that will be closest to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, in Jannah are the people of good character. And it is from the utmost needs that has to be present between husband and wife. Why? 
Because you don't deal with anyone more than a husband deals with a wife or a wife deals with a husband. No one. And the very nature of that relationship is what? That a person lets their what? Let's their guard down. That's the very nature of that. It's the very nature of that, of that uh, uh, relationship. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He benefit us in our marriages. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He make our homes, and especially that relationship of a husband and a wife, a means of comfort and tranquility for the children. This is another issue, Ikhwan. Again, these are just as, you know, you know, this affair of, um, you know, husbands and wives opening up whatever exists between them and their kids are present. Their kids are right there. They're hearing exactly what's being said. This is another issue. This is another issue. And it shows, wallahi, wallahi, it shows that we as a people have become selfish. We as a people have become selfish. Right? In everything, in everything, you will take a look at a matter and a person does not think of their children in that matter. They don't think of their children in that matter. But they're thinking of them and me and what is it that I need and what is it that I want. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الله تعالى يبارك فيكم ويجزيكم خيرا